Good morning, Mustangs. This is Ms. Brooks. Um, I'm going to read chapter 19 of the Red Pyramid today. Um, I'm just going to keep doing this for the rest of the time, even though you have a choice board starting next week. I'm going to give you the option, like, to still read with someone, like, reading it to you. Um, I'm still going to do that, um, especially for those who need it. Um, so next week starts the choice board. You guys have to be starting on your projects. Um, I know a lot of people are having pr problems sending me their videos. If you don't send me your video, then I just want the whole thing typed out and I want you to share it with me. Um, if I don't get these done, then that's a big issue. So let's just go ahead and start today on chapter 19. Um, this is Sadie's point of view. Um, Chapter 18 was a very long chapter, and I apologize for that. Um, 19 is going to be a little bit longer. Um, not longer than chapter 18, but a little bit longer of a chapter as well. Um, a Picnic in the Sky. This is from Sadie's point of view. Right, Carter. Give me the mic. So I'd been to the Louvre once before on holiday, but I hadn't been chased by vicious fruit bats. I would have been terrified, except I was too busy being angry with Carter. I couldn't believe the way he treated like my, he treated my bird problem. Honestly, I thought I would be a kite forever, suffocating inside a feathery prison. And he had the nerve to make fun. I promised myself I'd get revenge, but for the time being, we had enough worries staying alive. We raced along in the cold rain. It was all I could do to avoid slipping on the slick pavements. I glanced back and saw two figures chasing us, men with shaved heads and goatees and black raincoats. They, mu they might have passed for normal mortals, except they each carried a glowing staff. Not a good sign. The fruit bats at our heat. The, the fruit, the bats were literally at our heels. One nipped my leg. Another buzzed my hair. I had to force myself to keep running. My stomach still felt queasy from eating one of those one of the little pests when I when I was a kite. And no, that was not that had not been my idea. Totally a defensive insect. Sadie Bass called as we ran. You'll have only seconds to open the portal. Where is it? I yelled. We dashed across the Rue de Riv Rivoli into a wide plaza surrounding, surrounded by the wings of the Louvre. So that's a big building that surrounds the Louvre. Bast made straight for the glass pyramid at the entrance, glowing in the, du in the dusk. You can't be serious, I said. That is a real pyramid. Of course it's real, Bass said. The shape gives a pyramid gives a pyramid its power. It ha it is a ramp to the heavens. So regardless of it being a real pyramid or not, the fact that it's shaped like a pyramid and is shaped as a pyramid, it gives it power. The bats were all around us now, biting our arms flying around our feet. As as their numbers increased, it got harder to see or move. Carter reached for his sword, then apparently remembered it wasn't there anymore. He'd lost it he'd lost it in Luxor. Um he swore and rummaged around in his work bag. Don't slow down, Bast warned. Carter pulled out his wand. In total frustration, he threw it at a bat. I would not have thrown one of my weapons. I thought if this, I thought this a pointless gesture, but the wand glowed white hot and thumped the bat solidly in the head, knocking it out of the air. The wand ricocheted through the swarm, thumping six, seven, eight of those little monsters before returning to Carter's hand. Not bad, I said. Keep it up. We arrived at the base of the pyramid. The plaza was thankfully empty. And last thing I wanted was an embarrassing death by fruit bats posted on YouTube. So yes, this was the time of YouTube. Early time of YouTube, but regardless. <laughs>
One minute until sundown, Bass warned. Our last chance of summoning is now. She unsheathed her knives and started sl slicing bats out of the air, trying to keep them away from me. Carter's wand flew wildly, knocking fruit bats every which way. I faced the pyramid and tried to think of a portal, the way I'd done in Luxor, but it was almost impossible to concentrate. Where do you wish to go? I said in my mind. God, I don't care, America. I realized I was crying. I hated to, but shock and fear were starting to overwhelm me. I did, where did I want to go? Home, of course. Back to my flat in London. Back to my room, my grandparents, my mates at school, and my own life. I couldn't. I had to think of my father and our mission. We had to get set. America, I thought, now. My burst of emotions must have some, had some effect. The pyramid trembled. Its glass walls shimmered, and the top of the structure began to glow. A swirling vortex appeared all right. Only one problem. It was hovering above the very top of the pyramid. Climb, Best said. Easy for her. She was a cat. The side is too, too steep, Carter objected. He'd done a good job with the bats. Dazed heaps littered the pavements. But more still flew around us, biting every bit of our exposed skin. And the magicians were closing in. I'll toss you, Bass said. Excuse me? Carter protested, but she picked him up by the collar and his pants and tossed him up the side of the pyramid. So she grabbed one by the collar and one by the seat of his pants and just flung him. He, he skittered to the top in an, a very indignified manner and slipped straighter in th through the portal. Now you, Sadie, Bass said, come on. Before I could move, a man's voice yelled, stop. I stupidly froze. The voice was so powerful, it was hard not to. Two magicians were approaching. The taller one spoke in perfect English. Surrender, Miss Kane, and return our master's property. Sadie, don't listen, Bass warned. Come here. The cat goddess deceives you, the magician said. She abandoned her post. She endangered us all. She will lead you to ruin. I could not tell what he meant. He was absolutely convinced of what he was what he said. I turned to Bass. Her expression changed. She looked wounded, even grief stricken. What does he mean? I said. What did you do wrong? We have to leave, she warned, or they will kill us. I looked at the portal. Carter was already through. That decided it. I wasn't going to separate from him. As annoying as he was, Carter was the only person I had left. How is that for depressing? Toss me, I said. Bass grabbed me. See you in America. She, then she, then she chucked, up, chucked me up the side of the pyramid. I heard the magician roar. Surrender. And an explosion rattled the glass next to my head. Then I plunged through the vortex of sand. I woke in a small room with industrial carpet carpeting, gray walls, and metal framed windows. I felt as if I were inside a high-tech refrigerator. I sat up groggily and discovered I was coated in cold, wet sand. Ugh, I said. Where are we? Carter and Bass stood by the window. Apparently, they'd been conscious for a while because they, they'd both brushed themselves off. You've got to see this view, Carter said. I got shakily... I got shakily to my feet and nearly fell down again when I saw how high we were. An entire city spread out below us. I mean far below. Well over a hundred meters. I could almost believe we were still in Paris because a river curved off to our left and the land was mostly flat. There were the 
there were white government buildings clustered around networks of parks and circular rods all spread are under all spread out under a winter sky but the light was wrong it was still afternoon here so we must have traveled west and as my eyes made their way to the other end of the long rectangular green space I found myself staring at a mansion that looked oddly familiar. Is that the White House? Carter nodded. You got us to America, all right. Washington, D.C. But we're sky high. Bass chuckled. You didn't specify any particular American city, did you? Well, no. So you got the default portal to the U.S., the largest single source of Egyptian power in North America. I stared at her uncomprehendingly. The biggest obelisk ever constructed, she said, the Washington Monument. So if you've seen the Washington Monument, it's that very long, structured obelisk made of white marble. You guys should have seen it. If not, I'll show you pictures on Google Classroom. I had another moment of vertigo and moved away from the window. If you haven't had vertigo before, it's when you're really dizzy, disoriented, like everything's moving around you. Carter grabbed my shoulder and sit me down. You should rest, he said. You passed out for how long, Bast? Two hours and 32 minutes, she said. I'm sorry, Sadie. Opening more than one per portal a day is extremely taxing, even with I ISIS helping. Carter frowned. But we need to but we need her to do it again, right? It's not sunset here yet. We can still use portals. Let's not let's open one and get to Arizona. That's where set is. Bass pursed her lips. Sadie can't summon another portal. It would be, it would overextend her powers. I don't have the talent. And you, Carter? Well, your abilities lie elsewhere. No offense. Oh no, he grumbled. I'm sure you'll call me next time you need a boomerang for some fruit bats. Besides, Bass said, when a portal is used, it, it needs time to cool down. No one will be able to use the Washington Monument for another 12 hours. Carter cursed. I forgot that. Bass nodded. And by then, the demon days will have begun. So we need another way to get to Arizona, Carter said. I suppose he didn't mean to make me feel guilty, but I did. I hadn't thought things through, and now we're stuck in Washington. I glanced at Bass out the corner of my eye. I wanted to ask her what the men at the Louvre, the men at the Louvre meant, had meant about her leading us to ruin, but I was afraid to. I wanted to believe she was on our side. Perhaps if I gave her a chance, she'd volunteer the information. At least those magicians can't follow us, I prompted. Bass hesitated. Not through the portal, no. But there are other magicians in America, and worse, sets minions. My heart climbed to my throat. The House of Life was scary enough, but when I remembered Set and what his minions had done to Amos's house, what about Thoth's, um, Thoth's spellbook? I said. Did we? Did we at least find a way to fight Set? Carter pointed to um, to the corner of the room. Spread out on Bass's raincoat was Dad's magic toolbox and a blue book we'd stolen from Des Jardins. Maybe you can make sense of it, Carter said. Bass and I couldn't read it. Even Doughboy was stumped. I picked it. I picked up the book, which was actually a scroll folded into sections. The papyrus was so brittle, I was afraid to touch it. Hieroglyphs and illustrations crowded the page, but I couldn't make sense of them. My ability to read language seemed to be switched off. I says, I asked a little help. 
Her voice was silent. Maybe I'd ward her out. Or maybe she was cross with me for not letting her take my take over my body. The way Horace had asked Carter to do. Selfish of me, I know. I closed the book in frustration. All that work for nothing. Now, now, Bass said, it's not so bad. Right, I said, we're stuck in Washington, D.C. We have two days to make it to Arizona to stop a god we don't know how to stop. And if we can't, we'll never see our dad or Amos again, and the world might end. That's the spirit, Bess said brightly. Now, let's have a picnic. She snapped her fingers, the air shimmered, and a pile of friskies, friskies cans and two jugs of milk appeared on the carpet. So if you don't know what friskies it's it's like cat food in a can. Um, Carter said, Can you conjure any people food? Bass blinked. Well, no accounting for taste. The air shimmered again. A plate of grilled cheese sandwiches and crisps appeared along with a six pack of Coke. So if you don't know what crisps is, um uh, crisps are what like in Britain and England they call those chips. <laughs> Like what we call chips. Like um, laced potato chips, potato chips, that they call them crisps over there. Which is weird because chips over there are french fries. I know, it's a little confusing. Yum, I said. Carter muttered something under his breath. I suppose grilled cheese wasn't his favorite, but he picked up a sandwich. We should leave soon, he said between bites. I mean, tourists and all. Bass shook her head. The Washington Monument closes at six o'clock. The tourists are gone now. We might as well stay the night. If we must travel during the demon days, best to do it in daylight hours. We all must have been exhausted because we didn't talk again until we finished our food. I ate three sandwiches and drank two cups. Bass made the whole place smell like fish. Friskies. Then started licking her hand as if preparing for a cat bath. Could you not do that? I asked. It's disturbing. Oh, she smiled. Sorry. I closed my eyes and leaned against the wall. It felt good to rest, but I realized the room wasn't actually quiet. The entire building seemed to be humming ever so slightly sending a tremble through my skull that had that made my teeth buzz. I, w I opened my eyes and sat up. I could still feel it. What is that? I asked. The wind? Magic energy, Bass said. I told you, this is a powerful monument. But it's modern, like the, the Louvre Pyramid. Why is it magic? The ancient Egyptians were excellent builders. Sadie. They picked shapes, obelisks, pyramids that were charged with symbolic magic. An obelisk represents a sunbeam frozen in stone, a life-giving ray from the original king, uh, king of the gods, Ra. It doesn't matter when the structure was built, it is still Egyptian. That's why any obelisk can be opened for for opening gates to the Duat, or really releasing great beings of power, or trapping them, I said, the way you were trapped in Cleopatra's needle. Um, so let me just give some clarification. Obviously, this is a fantasy story, so magic in this case is not real, so really they can't infuse something with magic but what she's basically saying in this fantasy story is that any obelisk or pyramid the shape alone was made by the period uh by the egyptians so the egyptians came up with the structure of those buildings so anything of those same structures were used as transports her expression darkened i wasn't actually trapped in the obelisk. My prison was a magically created abyss deep in the duot, and the obelisk was the door your parents used to release me. But yes, all symbols of Egypt are concentrated nodes of 
match power. So an obelisk can definitely be used to imprison gods. The idea was nagging at the back of my mind, but I couldn't quite pin it down. Something about my mother and Cleopatra's needle and my father's last promise in the British Museum. I'll put things right. Then I thought back to the Louvre and the comment the magician made. Bass looked so cross at the moment. I was almost afraid to ask, but it was the only way I'd get an answer. The magician said you abandoned your post. What does he what did he mean? Carter frowned. When was this? I told him what happened after Bass chucked him through the portal. Bass stacked her empty friskies cans. She didn't look eager to reply. When I was imprisoned, she said at last, I I wasn't alone. I was locked inside with a creature of chaos. Is that bad? I asked. Judging from Bass' expression, the answer was yes. Magicians often do this, lock a god up together with a monster so we have no time of trying to escape our prison. For eons, like thousands upon millions of years, I fought this monster. When your parents released me, the monster got out. Bast hesitated a little too long for my taste. No, my enemy could, couldn't have escaped. She took a deep breath. Your mother's final act of magic sealed that gate. The enemy was still inside. But that's what the magician meant. As far as he was concerned, my post was battling that monster forever. It had the ring of truth, as if she were sharing a painful memory, but it didn't explain the other bit of the magical of the magician he had ex had said she endangered us all i was getting up to up the i was getting up the nerve to ask exactly what the monster had been when bass stood up i should go scout she said abruptly i'll be back we listened to her footsteps echo down the stairwell she's hiding something carter said work that out yourself did you i asked he looked away and immediately felt bad. I'm sorry, I said. I just... What are we going to do? Rescue Dad. What else can we do? He picked up the, his wand and turned it in his fingers. Do you think he really meant to, you know, bring Mom back? I wanted to say yes more than anything. I wanted to believe that was possible, but I found myself shaking my head. Something about it didn't seem right. Iskandar told me something about mom, I said. She was a diviner. She could see the future. He said she made him rethink some old ideas. It was my first choice to tell Carter about the co my conversation with the old magician, so I gave him the details. Carter knit his eyebrows. You think that was something to do with m why mom died? She saw something in the future? I don't know. I tried to think back to when I was six, but my memory was frustratingly fuzzy. When they took us to England the last time, did she and dad seem like they were, like they were in a hurry? Like they were doing something really important? Definitely. Would you... S would you say freeing Bast was really important? I mean, I love her, of course, but worth dying for important? Carter hesitated. Probably not. Well, there you are. I think Dad and Mom were, um, were up to something bigger. Something they didn't complete. Possibly... That's what Dad was after at the British Museum. Completing the task, whatever it was. Making things right. And this whole business about our family going back billions of years to some god hosting pharaohs. Why didn't anyone tell us? Why didn't Dad? Carter didn't answer for a long time. Maybe Dad was protecting us, he said. The House of Life d doesn't trust our family. Especially after what dad and mom did. 
Amos said we were raised apart for a reason, so we wouldn't, like, trigger each other's magic. Bloody awful reason to keep us apart, I muttered. Carter looked at me strangely, and I, and I realized what I'd said might have been construing at his compliment. I just mean they could have been honest, I rushed on. Not that I wanted, not that I wanted more time with my annoying brother, of course. He nodded seriously, of course. We sat listening to the magic hum at the obelisk. I tried to remember the last time Carter and I simply spent time together, talking. Is your, um, I tapped the side of his head, your friend being any help? Not much, he admitted. Yours? I shook my head. Carter, are you scared? A little. He dug his wand into the carpet. No, a lot. I looked at the blue blue book we'd stolen. Pages full of wonderful secrets I couldn't read. What if we can't do it? I don't know, he said. What book about mastering the element of cheese would have... Wait, that book about mastering the element of cheese would have been more helpful. Or summoning fruit bats. Please, not the fruit bats. We shared a weary smile, and it felt rather good. But it... But it changed to nothing. We were still in serious trouble, with no clear plan. Why don't you sleep on it, he suggested. You used a lot of energy today. I'll keep watch until Basque gets back. He actually sounded concerned for me. How cute. I want... I didn't want to sleep. I didn't want to miss anything. But I realized my eyelids were incredibly heavy. All right, then, I said. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I lay down to sleep, but my soul, my ba, had other ideas. So, obviously, her ba is now going to start taking a trip. We just don't know where yet. So, remember, make sure you guys are reading... Um, make sure you guys are still doing the discussion questions and that you're getting your projects done. All right. See you guys later.